Good. I wanted to share some really quick, great information with you from the Creative Vibe Studio. So I know that this time can be super challenging for all of us. Some of us have been working virtually and are accustomed to it, and then others are not. So this is really, really new. And a lot of those people who are not accustomed to it are children. They've been accustomed to going to school or your spouse who works in an office or you who has originally worked in an office and now is working from home. So how do you stay productive? How do you get things done? And how do you balance all the things, right? Because when you're not accustomed to working in a virtual environment, you tend to be more associated with the weekend, right? So now you're at home and trying to not get comfortable in your space, but also be comfortable and productive in your work life. So here's a great way to balance all those things. So working from home can be a challenge. Here are a few best practices that will help you survive a working, survive a virtual working environment, okay? So I put this together, it's on my website and the link will be listed below, but I wanted to just kind of make sure you have these things um, just in general. So when I originally started this, this is, created for people who may be transitioning from a, a full-time job and now doing a, a entrepreneurship. And this is put together with that in mind, but then I kind of expanded it. So some of these things you'll see like strong Wi-Fi connection, that's pretty basic. We need that to work from home. But being able to make time to separate the things that you normally do, like check your phone every five minutes, um, move around from space to space until you get comfortable or working from your bedroom on your bed in your pajamas um jumping on social calls and just picking up a phone when someone calls you um not having the proper snacks readily available these are things i think that if you take time to really be conscious of you can change your productivity level and your level of happiness <laughs> because it takes time to switch things that are your, not your normal practice so we're, we're creating a new normal right so with that being said working in a virtual environment requires a few things you have to start muting your notifications on your phone and maybe that's just during productivity hours that time that you really need to focus you may not be on a meeting call but you might need to get some work done physical work whatever your job entitles um and has you to do that's the time you need to be productive so turning off your notifications on your phone not necessarily turning your phone off because we're in an emergency situation here but it would be a good practice to just kind of mute your social media platforms and your text messages for an hour. You can wait an hour, people can wait an hour, and, and if it's an emergency, you can set on your phone those people who are emergency contacts to be able to come through, right? So you won't miss those. So take a look at your phone, make sure you have those settings in place, and you can be productive. Also, a great way to get comfortable working at home is to find a dedicated workspace. So I have moved around in my office. I have a little like nook workspace that they have provided in my apartment so i put my desk in there did it all up and it was great but i started feeling confined so i needed to switch it up so i've taken over my dining room table um just because i needed to have my big monitor room to write and take notes and really actually not have to keep moving around and you know being uncomfortable so find a place that's comfortable so you can sit down make sure you have pillows or, or back support things that so when you're sitting in chairs that you're not normally used to sitting in it'll be comfortable right so take a look at your room it might be your kitchen table it might be a desk in a spare bedroom it might be in your patio I don't know what your house looks like but take the time to not be too comfortable in your bedroom sitting in your bed like that's an evening thing if you're just checking email and maybe following up on some things that's kind of a gift and a luxury um, I think if you're really trying to be dedicated and be productive, you need to be in a space that will allow you to do that. So sit at a table, sit at a, in a chair that's comfortable and protect your back and you can get some things done. Also, schedule your breaks. You need to make sure you're taking a break, especially with this time when there's things happening. It's okay to take a break every, every, 30, every hour um, or every hour and a half. 
check the news, check your phone and see if there's anything that you're missing that you need to be aware of. Um, excuse me, but don't allow that to consume you. And also scheduling your social calls. So if you've noticed that you've been on a break during your productivity hour and someone's called you, once you take your break, you can text them back and say, hey, can I call you back around three? Then put that on your calendar so you know you're going to call your best friend, your mom, your cousin, your sister, your brother, whoever that person is, to touch base at three o'clock. Then you don't have to worry. You'll have time on your schedule to do that. And then you can kick back, make a cocktail, call them on FaceTime, however you want to handle that conversation and really be present, okay? The next thing, I think it's great to keep healthy snacks nearby because it's really easy to overeat when you are at home because your kitchen is right there. You can run in the kitchen, you can grab some cookies, you can, you know, make a whole burger and fries, and then guess what? You're going to sit down and watch TV because you're going to be tired. So don't do that. Have some healthy snacks available and I know that this time is not as easy but if you go to the store and stock up on these things you won't eat up all of your food that's for dinner and lunch and breakfast you'll have some healthy snacks available something that I like unless you have a peanut allergy I like to have mixed nuts handy some fruit in the refrigerator maybe cut up so I can just get a bowl um, it's always nice to have like some crackers it, it, you know depending on your allergies you have to like base that on what you can eat some fresh fruit just in a bowl bananas apples oranges those things are also really good because you can just grab it and sit back down at your desk and you're not having to cut something up and go to town and that just kind of takes away from your productivity time and it also just makes you tired <laughs> you're like oh i've made this whole dish and now i'm gonna go sit down and eat it and you've lost time so have some healthy snacks nearby the biggest thing that people forget about doing when you're working from home is this is not time to watch tv you can schedule time let's say you need to watch the news make sure you are present and comfortable grab your coffee and watch the news but you're not going to be productive if your TV is on and you're distracted by watching Netflix, catching up on your shows and your DVR, all those things. It just takes away. So plan that time. Something that I do, I have a DVR that's full of all our shows. I don't even think we watch live TV anymore, but we do watch our DVR. And I don't really turn the TV on Monday through Thursday. Thursday afternoon, especially if I'm in a good place, I may start catching up on some of my um, guilty pleasures <laughs> that I love my reality shows and see what's going on with that because I finished the week pretty good I'm in a good place and I don't necessarily need to be a hundred percent focused or what I'm working on is pretty easy so pick and choose turn your TV off during productivity hours and and maybe you turn it on at three o'clock because your day is almost over but I promise you if you turn your TV off have some music playing in the background or nothing you can get work done. And if you are playing music, I suggest that you have music that does not have lyrics. And I tell you this because when you have your favorite jams playing, you are singing along, you are reminiscing, you are thinking about what happened when that song was playing, and you're tempted to pick up the phone and text somebody. Like, girl, hey, you know you remember when we were jamming to X, Y, and Z. Just get you some jazz, some um, whatever, whatever you like. I mean, there's so many things on YouTube. There's so many things on Apple Music, so many things on Google Play. You can find some music that you can listen to that suits your, your genre. So pick and choose your music. Then use your resources and technology. You're at home now, so if you need to be in touch with people and it's not really appropriate to text your coworkers, use chats there's chats available most likely you already have an im system set up if you have office or if you are on a g suite platform you can use hangouts you can also set up project management tools that will allow you to stay in touch while you're out of the office there's great platforms like monday which i love it's a project management tool slack is really good for communicating and there's also great great tools out there within the google features so you can stay in in touch so take a minute talk to your boss depends on what kind of work you're doing or how big your team is you can stay in touch through instant message and talk back and forth without picking up the phone and always being distracted and taking away from what you're trying to work on 
Okay, so the last thing here for just working in a virtual environment is remember to be active. So when you schedule those breaks, get up from your desk, get up, go in another room, step outside, go check the mail, maybe take the trash out, something that you can get some steps in and be active and get some fresh air. So if you step outside, you really are breathing in some good fresh air. If it's raining, you might be able to just kind of, you know, take a break and you know, meditate for a moment on or think about the things that you need to do and just disconnect for a short period of time. And it's also great just to keep active, especially sitting in a chair that may be not be the best for your back. So get up, walk around and stay active at least every hour. Um, a good thing that I have is um, I have a Samsung Gear watch and it does remind me if I've been sitting down or being still for too long, it'll say it's time to get moving. So I take heed to that and I say, okay, let me get up or try to get to a stopping place so I can get up and walk around. Even if it's just to fill up my cup for some more water or get some coffee or run to the restroom, these things will help you stay active, do some torso twist, um, side bends, lunges, anything just to remain active from sitting at your desk all day. Okay, so that is the first checklist. Now let's talk about how things are different when you are at home with your spouse who may or may not be used to working with you. <laughs> how do you manage this? What are you doing so that you don't go crazy? You know, you're used to coming home after work and debriefing and talking about what's happening at work. Now you're in the same area and you're talking about work while you're at work, right? So respect each other's space, respect each other's jobs and the environment. And with that being said, I only have a couple of rules here. So I think that it's very important that you have separate spaces if you are able to work in different areas, because when you're working with other people, you don't realize how much, more, how much noise you make. Typing, chatting, getting up and down, putting things down, like you might annoy your spouse to no end if you do that. <laughs> and then those things that you keep doing, you might just not even think that it is a big deal, but it can cause problems. So figure out who's working where. Just, hey, I'm gonna sit at the table today, or I'm gonna be in the spare bedroom. You know what, I'm gonna go downstairs to the office space that they have, whatever. Now, right now, you can't really leave the house and be around people, so, Pick and choose what you're going to do and when let each other know what your schedule is. And that kind of goes into the next one. So sync up your schedules. If you know you're going to need to take a call and you're going to be on for an hour with your boss and you don't want me coming in the kitchen, getting ice out, turning my music on and singing and asking you questions, let me know when your, when your scheduled meetings are so that I can be quiet and go away. Go in another room, close the door and be quiet. Be respectful. So... It's just really easy to communicate these things. We, we respect and talk like this when we're at work. So when you're at home, I know that it's not your normal practice, but it's best to just plan ahead for those, for those times. Then, again, one person might want the TV on, somebody might want to listen to some music, and it's best if you talk about that too. Like I said, my, my suggestion is to turn the TV off if you want to have music on and you're working in, a, in a, an environment together, use your earbuds because then you are guaranteed to be focused on what you're doing because your music is playing in your ear and you're not distracting the other person. The last, the last two things are just if something is frustrating you, communicate it. Nip it in the bud. Don't let it drag out because we might be in this situation for a long time. It may be a month. Imagine holding on to this frustration and anger. It's not going to be good. So... Don't hold it in, get it out. And then schedule your lunch together. Like get your, once you've got your calls figured out and who's taking a scheduled meeting time at what time and how long you need to work, schedule a lunch together. Hey, I'm gonna make salad and grilled cheese or whatever it is that you want. And you can come in the kitchen and, and just check out of work. Don't talk about work and you know check the news if you want to and just have some time to spend together as normal like as if you were meeting for lunch in a normal workspace, okay? And that's really what I, that's all I have for working with your spouse. But now I wanna to talk to you just really quick about some great ways to work when your kids are home, jumping on your neck like this kid. <laughs> you love them, 
You want them to stay alive. So how do you do this? How do you do your work and make sure they're getting their work done? Um, I don't know anything more except for what I can see from my sister and other friends who have small kids and how they're balancing it all. I don't know what the school is sending out and expecting you as parents to do for homeschooling, but create a schedule. The kids are used to being on a schedule every single day. It is not foreign to them, right? So you don't have a schedule on the weekend, so they're not, they come home and it's the weekend, so you just do whatever. But during the day, during the week, they are accustomed to being on a schedule. And so it's okay to really say, hey guys, here's what we're gonna do from 7.30 to 8.30. We're gonna do X, Y, and Z. Map it out, put it on the refrigerator, put it on your desk. That way you can schedule your meeting times around what they're doing so that you know that they're situated, they are quiet, and they're aware of what you've got to do. I know this is very, like, this is difficult. So I don't think that I'm thinking you can just go in there, snap your fingers, and your kids are gonna be quiet. No. It's going to take a lot of re re uh, communication and just patience on your part to adjust to all this. The kids are used to it. You're not their teacher. You're their parent. So it's going to be different. So just be prepared and have those conversations with them so that they understand. And I talked about scheduling breaks. So when you schedule your lunch, they're used to having lunch. Find out what time they normally eat lunch so that they can stay on schedule and they're not bugging you for snacks or we're hungry, feed us. You already know what time they have lunch on a normal basis so you can prepare for that too. And then if you can get up or stay late, stay up later once they go to bed or if there's TV time um, after dinner, you can check some of the things off your list that might not need you to focus or that you need to focus on a little bit more. So get up, getting up early during while it's quiet and getting out of the bed and sitting at the table, you can get some work done. So that's the same productivity hour that I was talking about before, but you're just gonna have to schedule it a little differently because then that gives you some time during the day, during the regular work hours to really help your kids because they're, it's gonna be, you're gonna have to shift some things around. Like you're not gonna be able to just sit at your desk like you normally are. Um, for you know for eight hours and focus on your job you're gonna have to give them some attention and if you schedule that in so that you can help them with work be there to answer questions and not just be like hey be quiet you, you know going back and forth it'll help break up the the whole routine so keep that in mind and then the last thing is just making sure you're scheduling their time if they're like, let's say if they do finish at three and you've got two more hours of work, schedule that. To, to, that time is movie time or let's play outside time. They can go in the backyard, you know, not with their friends or anything, but they can go outside or take a nap or now it's reading time. Whatever it is so that you can get some really quality time um, during your working meetings so that they know, hey, I need you guys to be quiet. You're going to have to take a nap or whatever that looks like for your household and your schedule. So really quick and easy. So I've got this available on Creative Vibes on my website. So you can go to creativevibes.com forward slash checklist and I'd love for you to download this. But if you'd love, if you like this, what would be best, and I would appreciate it, if you could join my mailing list to get this checklist. And to do that, all you have to do is go to creativevibes.com forward slash offer. And when you go here, I should have known that I would not get that correct. Here it is. So when you go here, you'll be able to put your um, email in and it, when you hit submit, it will take you to that checklist page so that you can download that and stay green and stay green and view it on the screen or you can download it and print it off if you'd like to look at it later that way. So you have a couple options there. Please, please, please know that I'm here. I'm always working virtually. You can reach out to me via email at bridget.rooks at creativevibes.com. I'm happy to help you through this time, talk about things that you might be struggling with. And if there's any way that I can help you, it will be my pleasure. So have a great, wonderful weekend. This is for next week. So you have some time, a couple of days to breathe until we have to get back into this workspace again. But until then, go be great and I will talk to you soon. Bye.